Hello and welcome to more Nerdy Rodent Geekery. Today I'm once again diving into the world of Stable Diffusion and a brand new feature that has just been added to this, the Automatic 1111 web interface. And what is that new feature? It's this, Compositional Visual Generation with Composable Diffusion Models. Let's scroll down and have a look at some pictures, shall we? There, we have a Ferris wheel and a lake right next to the Ferris wheel and buildings next to the lake. So as you can see, we are composing images using natural language descriptions. Okay, so now we've got the simple stuff out of the way. Let's dive straight into the maths. Here we, no, no, let's have a look at some more pictures. So here, we've got an energy-based model example. Basically, you've got composition one here, road leading into the mountains, and then you can have any number of other compositions merged in with this. So here we've got yellow trees on the side of the road. Those go through the diffusion model, and then we get a concept conjunction. We get the two combined together got a little score for that one a little score for that one and we get a generated image isn't that fantastic let's scroll down and have a look at some other successful examples and some failure cases as well so here we've got a vehicle and a snow-covered forest. Put the two together, what do you get? You get a, an abandoned vehicle in a snow-covered forest. The same with a camel in a forest. You can get a camel in a forest, horse in a field, and a boat in the desert. You also get some fails. Here are some fails. So this as you can see, it doesn't know what a person is. So if you've got a diffusion model that doesn't know what a person is and you try and mix it with a bus, you're not going to get a person in a bus. You're just going to get the bus because it doesn't know what a person is. And the same with the diffusion models that get, you know, objects, attributes confused. So there we've got a bear in a red forest, but the bear's red and a car stuck in the forest. And you try and mix the two and you get a bear in a red forest and a car stuck in the forest. And you're actually going to get the red car stuck in the forest because the bear's red because it's got the attributes confused and here are some composition fails basically where the object is in the center so you've got try to mix a bird and a flower put the two together what do you get you get a mess and the same with a couch and a dog sitting in the living room and you try and mix the two together and you get some weirdness so do have a look through the paper have a look at the result analysis read through the failure cases see what works see what doesn't work and then you can start playing in your GUI so here it is Got some top tips to start with though. Uh, don't be afraid to drop the guidance scale down a little bit. If you're used to having it above 10, that's probably a little bit too high. Do drop it down a bit, especially if you start to get the colors blown out. If you put too many negative prompts in there, that will also prevent the composition from working properly. You can have one or two in there. That isn't a problem. So let's start with what the internet was made for. And that, as we all know, is pictures and videos of cats. So there we've got a picture of a cat. Doesn't that cat look fantastic? Excellent. So let's try putting this capital AND in there. Remember, the AND has to be in capitals, a lowercase AND will just function as AND has always done. So there we've got the cat AND red fur. So that's that's mixed the two together. Isn't that brilliant? OK, let's do it again. Let's put another AND in there. So we've got AND red fur AND a colourful background. What will we get if we mix all three together? We will get, yes, a cat with red fur and a colorful background. So I think you get an idea of how this composition works. Let's try with another example, shall we? Right, so we've got this. This is a fountain in a castle courtyard. So that gives us that picture. That's our starting picture. And now we add another and onto it. So here we've got a fountain in the castle courtyard and a fountain painting in the style of Van Gogh. So we put those two together. What do we get? Yes, we get a fountain and the style of Van Gogh put together. Doesn't that look fantastic? Seems a lot more easy to compose these things using this capital AND, doesn't it? You can really get what you want out of it. So what happens if we add AND a colourful background to that? Yes, we get a colourful background. As you can see, the style has changed a little bit. It looks a little bit more watercolory, but that's pretty much how everything works. So let's start to get a little bit weird, shall we? Just so we can really, really understand exactly what is going on here. So here we have Amer American Gothic and Starry Night. So I'm mixing two very famous paintings together. What do you think will happen if I mix two very famous paintings together? Well, let's see, shall we? We get something that looks a little bit like this. There we go. Isn't that weird? 
So we've got Starry Night. There we've got Starry Night and we've got American Gothic. Obviously, I've increased the weight there on American Gothic. So that's that's the sort of thing that you get out. Now, what happens? I mean, why does it look like that? What, what happens if I just take the and out and just put a normal and in there? So I've got American Gothic and Starry Night. Will it look exactly the same or will it look completely different? Well, we'll find out. There, it looks completely different, doesn't it? So that's that's what the capital and does, mixes those two together, mixes those two together. So we can mix all sorts of famous paintings together now, can't we? And get some very, very strange results. So here we're mixing night hawks and the great wave of Kanagawa as well. What's this going to look like? Well, it's going to look like a mixture of the two which is like that. So you've got sort of the great wave in 3D plowing through the, the shop there at night. That's that's quite strange, isn't it? And does it make a difference if you put the words the other way around? So if I start off with the great wave and, and the Nighthawks afterwards, will it give me exactly the same picture or does it still make a difference? Let's find out. Dun, 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 dun. There we go. It is in fact a different picture. So yes, it does make a difference which one you start with and what order you put the ands in. So there you go. Brand new feature in that web interface. Absolutely fantastic amounts of fun to play with. But before you go, there's a couple more links here that you can click on to learn about even more nerdy rodent geekery.